It was a place for the worst of the worst. The job? Build a prison for America's most dangerous men. This gained him the term public enemy number one. The site? A tiny island in shark-infested waters. It was a prison within a prison in a very remote, difficult location. The challenge? Make it escape-proof. He had vowed that the prison couldn't hold him. Was it possible? Hard time on a big rock. Alcatraz. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. Attica, San Quentin, Sing Sing. Ah, these are the names any criminal dreads. And no prison is more infamous than the one perched on that tiny island in San Francisco Bay. But it wasn't always that way. San Francisco, April 18th, 1906. At 5.12 a.m., the walls began to shake. A 7.9 magnitude earthquake unleashed its fury on the Golden Gate City. It must have seemed to citizens of San Francisco like the end of the world, almost uh, a biblical disaster. When the rumbling stopped, more than 3,000 people were dead. 200,000 were homeless, and the city's jails were in flames. You've got a big problem because uh, you'll have three city jails crammed with prisoners and uh, releasing a bunch of hardened criminals out into this devastated landscape was a non-starter. The job of moving the city's inmates fell to the new sheriff in town, Thomas O'Neill. And the classic version of the Old West lawman, he uh, manned up, cowboyed up, and got his job done. O'Neill marched a line of convicts to a prison ship and steamed nine miles north to San Quentin. When they got there, the warden said, these aren't state prisoners, I'm not taking them. So the boat turns around and sails back to San Francisco. They get to San Francisco, they see all the refugees from the quake crowding the wharfs, waving their arms and yelling to be taken aboard the boat so they can be moved away from the city too. Well, that's an on-starter as well. So then Tom gets the bright idea, well, let's try Alcatraz. Alcatraz was a military prison. It was originally constructed as a fort to guard the narrow strait connecting the Pacific and San Francisco Bay. Taking in O'Neill's inmates highlighted Alcatraz's limitations. There's just enough room to take these people in, but they're really bulging at the seams. It was decided that if Alcatraz was going to remain a military prison, they needed to build something more secure and more manageable. To lead the charge, the military tapped a construction expert, Major Reuben B. Turner. They gave Turner a quarter of a million dollars to build a brand new prison. But if Turner was going to succeed, he would have to shore up the prison's leaky reputation. Shrewd inmates had escaped the island by an impressive array of manners and means. A prisoner built a crate and had himself nailed into it and that crate was then shipped overnight to San Francisco. In 1903, four prisoners managed to very cleverly forge their own release documents. And then in 1906, uh, there were some prisoners involved uh, in an escape from the bakery. To prevent any more escapes, Turner designed six freestanding cell blocks, each three tiers high, with a total of 600 cells. Around that, a 500-foot-long concrete structure, and around that, deadly waters. Turner's masterwork was a prison within a prison within a prison. So if they succeeded in getting out of their cell, they then had to get out of the prison building, which was a whole other layer of concrete and steel, and then they had to get off the island. But before he could build a prison, he had to find a way to level a fortress. The citadel, which existed on top of the island prior to the modern cell house, brick structure, heavily fortified. What Turner decided to do was, rather than demolish the entire citadel, just knock off the top two floors, leave the basement intact, and build the new reinforced concrete structure right on top of it. 
It was like a giant three-dimensional chess game, is how do I move these pieces around, maximize the efficiency, minimize the expenses? But who would actually do the dangerous labor? Well, let's just say Turner didn't have to report to HR. The workforce was the prisoners. They were available, maybe not willing, but they were available. Just getting supplies to the remote job site was a grueling task. They had to get the materials across the bay, unloaded on a dock with tremendous currents. There was only one location they could land. The walk literally from the dock to the top of the island is the equivalent of a 13-story building. Thankfully, the most crucial supply of all could be mixed right on the rock. Concrete's an incredibly versatile material. The strength you can get compared to wood and some other materials make it very advantageous. But with Pacific winds gusting up to 100 miles an hour, concrete alone was not enough. Concrete is a material that l performs very well in compression. So imagine a, a column of concrete and weight that you can put on top of that column. It does very, very well in that fashion. Now, if you take that same column and you turn it on end as a beam, it doesn't necessarily like to be in a situation where it can bend. So Major Turner brought in the reinforcements. His crew added steel supports to the concrete walls. If you look at the Pantheon in Rome that was built 2,000 years ago, without the technology of re reinforcing steel, the walls on that building are 20 feet thick versus the foot or so thick on the main prison building. When the concrete set, the state-of-the-art military prison became the largest steel-reinforced concrete structure in the world. No wind could blow this place down, but the building would be tested by a source more sinister than Mother Nature. The mob had this entire new black market to exploit, and it took full advantage. 